It was in 1985 that the human race first began to understand the implications of our destruction of our environment. It was in 1985 when we first discovered the ozone hole over Antarctica. In this video, in the next five to seven minutes, we will seek to explain the phenomenon of the ozone hole and the science behind it, how it can be defeated, and how it began. What is ozone, and why is it important? Brian? Well, Keith, it's funny that you should ask that. Ozone is three oxygen molecules bound together, or O3. Most of it resides in the stratosphere where it protects us from harmful types of ultraviolet radiation, which we call UVB. These types of ultraviolet radiation range between 200 to 300 nanometers in length and are very damaging to our skin and are one of the main causes of skin cancer. For a more practical demonstration, I'm going to step over here to show you guys something. Kobe. Hey, Brian. Nice shot, Keith. Thanks, Brian. Do you mind if I borrow those for a second, actually? Oh, no, no problem. I was just practicing up. Thank you very much. Each ball represents a single oxygen molecule. The three balls together form ozone. Ozone is formed when UV rays split O2 in what is called photodissociation. One of the free oxygen molecules from this then forms with another O2 to create O3 or ozone. Ozone in the stratosphere forms the ozone layer, which protects us from the ultraviolet radiation that is harmful to us. Think of it as a kind of shield around the Earth. Now, it is important to note that there is a natural cycle of ozone creation and destruction in the stratosphere. The sun's UVB rays photodissociate ozone into oxygen and free oxygen in an exothermic reaction. Free oxygen is then bound to an oxygen molecule in an endothermic reaction, which is powered by the same UVB rays that destroy ozone. Now, imagine that these two pool balls are chlorine and bromine. Chlorine, bromine, hydroxyl radicals, NOx compounds, and other free radicals damaging to ozone are released by a variety of human processes. For example, they exist in certain refrigerator coolants. They slip from the troposphere to the stratosphere and engage in recombination reactions which diminish the amount of ozone in the ozone layer. Chlorofluorocarbons are among the most damaging of compounds to be released into the stratosphere by humans. They dissociate, releasing a chlorine radical into the stratosphere. Take it from there, Brian. Now, we have used the chlorine in our reaction. Watch carefully as it strikes the ozone molecule. Wow, it's lucky the balls all turned out like that. Look, the chlorine has associated with an oxygen molecule to form chlorine oxide, and the two oxygen molecules are still together, forming O2. This is what happens when chlorine reacts with ozone. Now a free oxygen will react with chlorine oxide. Oh lord, what's happened, Brian? Well, Keith, a free oxygen molecule has reacted with chlorine oxide to form O2 and chlorine. This free chlorine molecule is now able to start the destructive process all over again. Yep, that's the stuff. It's a beautiful day. Oh yeah. Well actually it's nice. You know what? I've been thinking. Wouldn't it be nice to be in Antarctica right now? Actually, Brian, you're wrong. Dead wrong. Lethally wrong. You see, Brian, CFCs and other halocarbons, which release chlorine, bromine, and other catalysts that break down ozone, 
were released into the atmosphere by humans for many decades. These anthropogenically produced ozone destroyers took their toll in the Earth's atmosphere before anyone even noticed. In 1985, a team of researchers led by J.C. Farman discovered that ozone levels over the Antarctic had declined massively by up to 50% or below 220 Dobson units during the Arctic fall and summer. Scientists now understand that this ozone hole over the South Pole is caused by the trapping of chlorine and other ozone-depleting catalysts in polar stratospheric clouds during the Arctic winter and the mass release of these radicals during the spring and summer thaw results in ozone depletions in the Arctic that have caused an ozone hole to form over the region during the warm months. These images, which depict ozone low levels in blue, are taken using TOMS, or Total Ozone Mapping Spectrometer, technology. But the problem isn't limited to the Arctic. The entire Earth's ozone levels are declining by up to 4% per decade. And despite many efforts to restore the ozone layer, 2006 marked the largest ozone hole on record. Effects of this increase in ozone depletion, we can expect to see also an increase in skin cancer as the more damaging ultraviolet radiation UVB escapes into the lower troposphere. Also, a decrease in phytoplankton is very possible, which will result in a less productive ocean and also more global warming. However, not all is bad. With the Montreal Protocol, all chlorofluorocarbons are expected to be phased out by at least 2030, and we should see a large reduction in the ozone hole by 2060. Also, there appears to be an end to the seemingly perpetual chlorine cycle. Reservoir species are being formed between chlorine and other atoms in the stratosphere, which remove it from this ozone-depleting process. It's up to our generation to beat ozone depletion. We won't let you die of skin cancer, Harry. Only you can stop chloroform. <laughs>